Max here, Frozen CPU. How you doing today? We had a little bit of a warehouse change. I'm going to put our new address right here on the video. Please check that out. Uh, shoot us an email, give us a call. Anyway, today I'm here to talk to you about fluid. Uh, common misconceptions and a lot of things I see that customers purchase that uh, raises questions for me as to uh, what's going on, where they're finding the information, um, and what's causing them to make these purchasing decisions. So back in the start of custom water cooling, um, there was a lot of home-brewed coolants going on during this time. Uh, commonly people would use standard grocery store distilled water and uh, generally they would add some sort of biocide uh, to deal with algaic growth and occasionally even ethylene glycol that you would get uh, like yeah, antifreeze you'd get from a car or put in your engine. And uh, what that did was two things. Obviously the biocide would help with growth in the water, but the ethylene glycol, the reason that was a good thing at the time, uh, ethylene glycol, unlike biocides, is actually alkaline. Um, alkalinity compared to acidity. It's pH levels. Uh, metals, which are in your loop, such as copper, brass, in some cases, silver, in some cases aluminum. Uh, you'll have a little bit of nickel plating on blocks, maybe on fittings. So ethylene glycol into the distilled water. Uh, the whole purpose is to help with corrosion, but also algaic growth. Ethylene glycol is poisonous, alright? So that's going to help with LG. Another common thing you'll see is this guy right here. All right, this is our frozen CPU dead water. This is actually copper sulfite, which is acidic. Now, all this talk about acidity and alkalinity, uh, I can tell you right now as a fact, um, because a lot of this is opinionated. Fact, however, is that alkalinity is much easier on metals in terms of galvanic corrosion than acidity. So adding stuff like this guy right here to distilled water is going to make your loop now acidic slightly and over time uh, those pH levels will change. One thing I do want to say right away is if you are using just distilled water and biocide you need to have something like this. You have to have pH strips or some kind of way to test the pH of your water on a regular basis. At least once a month you need to just dip something into your reservoir to see where your pH is. All right, you want to be pretty close to pH neutral. For anything, you want to be slightly alkaline. Most people tend to be slightly acidic, uh, and that's where the whole corrosion problem usually stems from, is acidity in the loop. Look at your car, your radiator, um, and your engine blocks. It's alkaline. You're using antifreeze. It's an alkaline solution. You're not using acids in your car. There are many different coolants on the market today. I have a couple right here for you. Got the classic. Mayhem's Pastel, got some uh, Primo Chill View, and got some of my personal favorite, the XSPC-EC line of coolants. Um, sometimes these coolants will tell you right on the bottle what they have in them, other times they won't. XSPC, one of the main reasons I use these guys is they tend to contain propylene glycol, which is very similar to ethylene glycol, however it's considered less toxic. It tends to not eat away at plastics and materials as much and it's supposedly made from some kind of uh, natural extract, some kind of plants or corn or something strange like that. Anyway, companies such as Mayhem's, um, not so much in their standard pastel, but in their XT1 Nuke and some of their other more intense coolants, they use ethylene glycol. With ethylene glycol, you have to be careful what tubing you guys are using, folks. Primo Chill states, and so does Mayhem's right on their sites, that Primo Flex is not compatible with ethylene glycol. Does it mean you're going to have a problem with it? Who knows? But, generally speaking, you have to watch out. Same with PETG. PETG is not supposed to be used with ethylene glycol. I have never personally seen a problem with it. They are considered incompatible materials. That is why the propylene glycol components, or coolants, excuse me, the propylene glycol coolants such as XSPC are my... Alright, so some of the things I see with orders we get, for example, uh, we'll have someone buy a nice pre-mixed coolant such as this, and then on that same order, I will see maybe a couple of these. These are silver kill coils. Uh, the silver in these is designed to, not sure how much it's to affect the pH, I'm sure it does to an extent, but this is designed to be in some way an antimicrobial solution. Now if you take a look at this coolant here, uh, this might be trivial to some of you, uh, others maybe not, all the information you need to know is right on here. In fact, this coolant even has protection 
for mixed metal loops with aluminum. Let's uh, take a little read in here. Uh, based on a blend of refined vegetable extracts, non-toxic corrosion inhibitors, superb production for copper, brass, steel, nickel, and aluminum. So theoretically, you could run like a thermal take radiator, which are made out of aluminum. Most people are going to not recommend those. Uh, this fluid is supposed to be able to handle that. So in no way, if you have this in your system, are you to need silver kill coils or any kind of antimicrobial solution. Everything is in here. It's an all-in-one coolant. All right. Back in the start of this, all-in-one coolants that were on the market were quite bad. Uh, the dyes in them used to clog up blocks, and people had a lot of problems. Okay, that's why you saw a lot of this stuff for coolant. Uh, Jay's Two Cents is notorious for this. He uses something much cheaper than this stuff here. This is Type 2 deionized water, lab grade, something I would recommend. It's a little lavish, maybe, uh, maybe a little more than you need, but hey, you're already doing a custom loop, water-cooled computer. You might as well spend the extra couple dollars on the good stuff. So uh, Jay's Two Cents is notorious for just running some distilled water and dye in there and maybe a drip or two of this. And that might work for him. That might work for you, but it also might not. This is a very opinionated topic. However, what I want to stress is with these different coolants on the market, you are running into more problems adding silver kill coils and biocide to the coolants than you would be just using them on your own. And you're spending more money. Here's a great example of this, Primo Chill View, everyone's favorite new coolant. Okay, you look right on Primo Chill's website. Can't use these with Enermax Neo Changers because there's aluminum. These are never to be used with silver kill coils. Why? Because of pH imbalance. All right, these other things, such as this stuff and this stuff, it's going to cause a problem, especially with something like Pastel or View. Pastel is also another notorious problem coolant. Um, I've had several customers uh, that have emailed me images of their systems clogging up with Pastel and when asking them if they were using anything in their loop, they were using these. Now on the other side of the spectrum, using deionized water or distilled water and biocide is incredibly cheap. Uh, Linus Tech Tips, you do this as well. Nothing wrong with that, people have been doing it forever. However, like I said, you must check your pH on a regular basis. So anyway, this is Max, Frozen CPU, www.frozencpu.com. Give us a call, shoot us an email, have a great day.